In today's video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step how to draw and paint an immaculate heart with watercolors. My name is Amy Heisey, and this is my naughty kitty cat Scully, and she's excited to paint, so let's go ahead and get started. For this painting, you're going to need a piece of watercolor paper. I taped mine down with some masking tape. You need a water cup, some different sizes of paint brushes, watercolor paints, paper towels, a pencil, some salt, and if you want to you can use something like masking fluid to help protect your flowers and other parts of your painting while you paint. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use our pencil to draw out our immaculate heart. So the first thing that I'm going to do is um, draw out the bumps of my heart. So I like to start with the top bumps. I do two curved lines that kind of remind me of the shape of a bird. Once I get my bumps for my heart drawn in, I like to draw out the bottom point of my heart. So I just extend those curves down to a point and that point kind of reminds me of the letter V. And if I'm ever going too fast, you can always pause the video or skip ahead if you're ready for the next step. And anything that I do that um, I want to tweak, I can always just use my handy dandy eraser to make any adjustments in these early stages. So once we have our heart drawn out, we're going to start to put in our roses. I always like to start with the middle rose first, and there's lots of different ways that you can draw them out, but I'll show you some simple um, options that you can do. So what I like to do is I like to find the middle of my heart, and I like to kind of start with like a swirl shape. So think like a cinnamon roll where the line is going around and around in a circular motion. And if I kind of bump my pencil up and down, that can make it look like the petals are curled or bumpy, and I can have it connect to my swirl and start again. So I can move my pencil around and each movement and bump of my pencil creates a petal for my roses. And you can do however many or a few petals you want. If you want to change up the design, you're more than welcome to. Once I get the middle rose down, it's easier for me to put additional roses on either side to help keep it symmetrical. And since these ones are a little bit more tucked behind, um, if you hit the rows in the middle, you can just kind of stop your line and then continue on the other side. And you can have these petals be as big or as small as you'd like. I'm extending mine past the edges of the heart. And I'm going to do my last rows with my swirled petals that kind of overlap each other. And when I'm all done, I can erase these parts of the heart that I can see on my petals. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting in my sword that's piercing the heart. So um, you're going to start by drawing a line that's diagonal. So it's going to stop and continue on the other side, kind of in the same line. I'm gonna draw a parallel line right next to it so it kind of comes into the heart a little bit on both sides of the heart. And um, 
what I'm going to do is on this side, I'm going to do a curved line, kind of like a frown. And that's going to be um, where the sword is piercing through. And I'm going to do a curved line on this side, kind of like a smile for that part. So the sword on this end, I'm going to have this end be the pointy bit. So I'm going to draw a letter V kind of shape and I can do kind of like a line down the middle of the sword like that and then over on this side um, I want to create the handle of the sword so I'm going to put a line here to kind of close off that end of the sword and I'm going to do a little rectangle shape kind of on the end and a slightly longer rectangle shape kind of cutting across um, those first parallel lines of the blade like so and anything that I want to erase I can just use my pencil eraser to get rid of kind of like that and I also want to do a line down the middle here for that blade as well once you get the sword drawn out, we're going to put in the flames. So I'm going to start over here on the left side. I like to do curved lines, kind of like this. This one reminds me of the shape of a question mark. And I want the point of this flame to be smaller and narrow. So I'm going to draw my line close to it. But as I follow the curve of that question mark shape, I want to get my line bigger and thicker so that flame is pointed at the end thicker in other parts um, I can do the same thing on this side kind of do like a curved line this one kind of reminds me of the letter S and I want this one to be pointed but thicker in some spots and then I can do a wavy line for my metal flame and you can do as many or as few flames as you want to in yours this one's a little bit taller than that one, but that is okay. Flames come in all shapes and sizes. So um, before we start to fill in our immaculate heart with color, um, I wanted to let you know that sometimes it can be helpful to use something called masking fluid to help protect the parts of your painting um, things like the flowers or the sword that way if i'm like painting my heart or i'm painting my flames i don't have to worry about the color of the heart or the flame getting on top of the sword or the flowers so if that's something you're interested in doing it kind of reminds me of like a rubber cement um, where you just put it in the spots that you want the paper to stay white and then you let it dry and then you can peel it off when you're ready to paint with it. So if that's something you're interested in, um, I'll link that in the description box, but you absolutely do not have to use masking fluid for these next steps. So you can color in your heart however you wish after you draw it, but I'm going to be using watercolors to fill in mine. So um, I'm gonna start off by filling in the heart. With watercolors, it's important to do one little section at a time. Um, that way all of the colors don't all mix together. So I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna dip it in my water, and I am going to load up my paintbrush with my first color of paint. And I picked this, um, nice kind of pink color for my heart but you can do any shade that you wish and i'm painting on my dry paper filling in the heart and um, since i did not use masking fluid on my sword or on my flowers i just have to be extra careful as i paint around them if i accidentally got a little bit of paint on the flower or on um, the sword, I can always wipe it up with a paper towel to get rid of that pink color. So if I wanted that color darker, I could add more paint or like another layer. You can also add in additional colors on top of your heart while the paint is still wet and that can make neat effects um, as you're painting. 
So I'm going to do that bottom section. I'm going to grab some more of my same pink shade and I'm going to be filling in this bottom, making sure that I am being careful around the flowers and around the sword. Anything that I accidentally paint on top of, I can always mop up that pink color with a paper towel. So while that part of my heart is starting to dry, I can work on another section of my painting. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to work on filling in these flames. So um, I switched to a slightly smaller paintbrush, that way I could fit inside the curls of the flames. And um, I like to start with the lightest colors first. So I want to do some yellow as the first brightest color of my flames. So I'm just dipping my brush into my paint and I'm starting to spread it onto the dry paper. The lighter I want that color to be, the less paint I can put on my brush or the more water I can add to my paintbrush to kind of tone down that yellow paint. And if I want it darker, I just have to load up my brush with more of the paint. See how that's much darker? and um, that just changes the color. So I'm trying to be careful around the heart because parts of my heart are still drying, but if it accidentally mixes with it a little bit, that is okay. So while the paint is still wet, I wanna add other colors to create different shades of my flames. So I can grab another color like orange for example and I can drop that color directly on top of some of my wet yellow and because the yellow is still wet it's starting to spread those new colors that I add all throughout the painting kind of like this. You can even see some of the spots where the pink that I had that wasn't quite dry it's starting to bleed into my flames too and that's a happy accident. It's making some really neat effects. So I can do this with multiple colors. I think I'm going to grab some more of that pink that I used for the heart to kind of complement the flames that I have. I'm just going to drop that color right on top of the wet orange in parts where I want the flames a little bit darker and I'm loving the way that it's kind of pulling and creating different shades and different effects all throughout. So while that is wet and doing its thing, anything that I don't like, I can always take something like a paper towel to like suck up any color that I don't want. Um, but one of my favorite effects to do with flames is I love to take salt and I love to sprinkle it on top of the flames while they're still wet. And what's going to happen is it's going to suck up some of the paint color and it's going to create these really interesting crystal effects, which I feel like helps the paint look more flame-like. So that, those are our flames. While that's drying, we can start to work on our sword. So I'm going to start with the handle first. I think I'm going to do like a dark, a dark purple kind of color. So I'm going to load up my paintbrush with some paint and I'm going to be filling in the different parts of my handle. A piece at a time. Since that's a little bit wet, I think I'm going to give that a little bit of time to dry and I'm going to move on to the light gray or silver of the blade. So I have some gray paint on my paintbrush. If it's ever too dark, you can always add a little bit of water to your paintbrush and kind of use that to lighten up the color. can 
fill that in. Anything that I feel like is too dark, I can always absorb some of that color with my paper towel. And then I'm going to finish up my handle. And you can do any color, any design that you'd like. Watercolor kind of has a mind of its own, so if it mixes with some of your other colors, I say just go for it. But like I said, if you really don't like the way it's doing that, you can always use your paper towel to suck some of that up. All right, the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna work on filling in our flowers. You can do any colors that you want. Um, because my heart has so many bright, saturated colors, I wanna do something a little bit on the lighter side. So I think I'm going to be using kind of like this pretty um, minty color. And I'm going to use like a really light wash of this to fill in my flowers. And while that color is still wet, you can kind of get some neat effects by taking your brush and you can kind of tap it with some extra color onto your flowers. And that can kind of create different shades in your flowers kind of like that. Because the paint's wet, it's spreading that paint around in interesting ways. You can do this with multiple colors also. So for example, I can get some of this kind of minty color on first, but then maybe I want to throw some purple on there to kind of change the colors. And that's kind of a neat effect too. So when you put wet paint on top of wet paper, that is called wet on wet. And that's a watercolor technique that creates some really interesting paint bleeds in your painting. So before I wrap up some of the details, I need to wait for this to dry. You can always use something like a blow dryer to help that um, dry faster if you're really anxious to work more on your painting, or you can just let it naturally dry and take a break. So I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll come back and I'll add some more detail to my painting. So I blow dried my painting to help it dry faster. And if I want to, I can go back and I can um, add extra paint to kind of help define some of these shapes a little bit more. I think I wanna go around um, some of my roses, for example, and kind of bring back some of the details from my petals with just a little bit of paint. You could also use like your pencil or something to define those edges a little bit more. I also want to um, define the edges of parts of my sword to make those stand out a little bit more as well. Thank you so much for painting your Immaculate Heart of Mary paintings with me. I'd love to see how they turned out. Feel free to tag me on social media. If you like this video, you can go ahead and subscribe and follow along with future art tutorials like this, as well as other ways to tap into your creativity with the Catholic Twist. God loves you unconditionally and he loves your artwork unconditionally too. Thanks.